Download the TuneIn Radio app. Take us wherever you happen to be going in WROI land. Again, partly sunny skies expected today and a high temperature of about 70 to 59 right now. Well, it's time for Doc Talk Radio, brought to you by the folks at Woodlaw Hospital, and we welcome Dr. Karen Cook from Akron to the studio this morning. Good morning, Dr. Cook. Thank you. Good morning, Good morning. Good morning. County. Yeah, thank you for being here. Oh, glad to be here. And we're talking about a very timely subject, aren't we? Yes, I chose to discuss allergies this morning because of the time of the year and what I'm seeing in the office, and um, I think everybody can relate to this and would be hopefully interested in what I'm going to talk about. Okay, let's remind our listeners, too, as we go through the course of the program, if they have a question, give us a call, 223-6059. We'd be happy to pass along to Dr. Cook. Okay. Okay. Well, allergies. What are allergies? Allergies are a response of your body in a negative way to some foreign substance. Um, and this happens as a result of our immune system uh, responding to that foreign substance. Um, so we have the reaction. What does our body do to this allergen? The allergen is the substance that your body is finding as being foreign. Your body doesn't like it, in other words. That's correct. Okay. It doesn't like it. And it usually takes at least two years of exposure to an allergen before somebody truly has an allergy to really? that. So it's important, especially in young children, who parents may be bringing them in thinking they have allergies because their nose is running or their eyes are tearing. But it really, it takes much longer for those allergies to develop. Um, so, and you can't have an allergy to something that you haven't ever been exposed to either. So That's interesting to note that yeah. too. Okay. And you'll see a lot of people who have lived in one climate of our, one part of our country for all their life and then they move to another and all of a sudden they're having symptoms that they've never had before. Um, so they've moved to the wrong place basically. I think the Midwest is notorious for that, aren't we? Yeah, <laughs> and there's thought that the, the the lake plays into that too with the moisture that we have on this side of Lake Michigan. We have definitely different allergens than on the other side of okay. the lake. So, um, so to start out, we'll talk about what are common allergens, the things that people are allergic to, and then we'll talk about some of the reactions or the allergy symptoms that people have. Okay. Um, so pollens are probably the most prevalent, and that's what's causing a lot of people trouble right now. Um, this time of the year is often referred to as hay fever season, um, and that's implying that you know there's harvesting, the hay is being baled. But usually, the allergy in at this time of the year is not to hay, but it's to weeds and to molds that are growing around the hay and out in the fields and in the soil. Um, so we have we have weed pollens right now, primarily ragweed, okay. um, but there are other weeds too. So weed pollens, mold. Uh, mold can be outside molds. We can also have inside molds. Um, mold likes warm, dark, and moist places. Um, your bathroom is a great place for mold to grow. Um, you can see mold on the surfaces, um, on the underside of your toilet where there's condensation, on the ceiling above your shower. But then also if there happens to be a leak in your plumbing, you can have a slow drip that can cause just enough moisture that mold will grow behind a shower wall or if you have a small leak in your roof you can get mold that's growing up in your attic or your ceiling and um, unless and, and this is kind of a hot topic too that people are worried about mold in their house and black mold. Right, exactly. If you don't have an allergy to that mold you're not going to have um, illness or symptoms from it. You have to have the allergy to it to become okay. sick from that. Um, and there are companies that do water restoration and they can do testing to find out if there are mold, significant mold spores in your home that might prompt some further cutting out of walls and investigating and finding out if you have a problem. Okay. Um, back to pollens, uh, in the springtime we have um, trees starting to bud and bloom. Um, so trees are usually our spring allergen, then the grasses start pollinating so that's more of a late spring early summer and then the weeds kick in and that's what we have in the fall so those are our typical outdoor uh, allergens and then when the weather gets cold and the windows get closed and the doors get closed and we're not outside as much then the people who have indoor allergies um, start to be the ones that you're seeing um, pets um, dust or dust mites 
cockroaches are actually a common allergen and it's not in any way um, a hygiene issue but if you've been around a cockroach you can develop an allergy to it yeah we don't like them anyway nobody likes those <laughs> at all yeah um, uh, I mentioned the pets um, and then just to mention you know there are a lot of people that are allergic to medications there are a lot of people that have food allergies and those two issues are kind of separate talks all in of themselves so I'm not going to really hit on those but but um, the symptoms are often slightly different than what we have with the um, nasal allergies that I'm primarily talking about. Make a definition for us here. The, the difference, if there is any, between what we're talking about in terms of allergies and being allergic to something. So if somebody is allergic to something, then they have um, either a clinical history that is it matches perfectly that I'm fine in the winter and then the trees start to bud and my nose won't stop running and I sneeze and I itch. Um, they are allergic to some tree that's okay. budding. Um, and often we can get people's symptoms under control um, by medication or avoidance of whatever the allergen is. Um, and we don't need to pursue actual testing and finding out what exactly are they allergic to. Sometimes the symptoms are severe enough that we are prompted to do that. Sometimes we can't really figure out what the allergen is and in those situations we would refer the patient to uh, an allergist who does um, testing um, and I'll mention that now I was gonna mention it later okay. but we can talk about that now um, they take uh, little tiny needles and they put that common allergens based on your story um, they'll put little bits of allergen on the tip of that needle and then they poke your skin on your back with it and you sit there for 20 minutes and we look to see, do you mount a reaction to that substance? And if so, they will then tell you, hey, you know, you're allergic to... Okay. To, okay. Uh, Pretty simple or, determination, right? Pretty simple yeah. way to determine. There are some, there are blood tests that can be done, but those are not as meaningful and don't correlate quite as well with symptoms and true allergy. So, okay. So skin testing is really the hallmark of, of truly uh, sorting out the diagnosis of what the allergen is. All right. Um, so uh, so once you, uh, your body mounts the response to that allergen, what type of symptoms do people come in um, complaining of or telling us about, and what do we see okay. as clinicians? So um, the common ones are sneezing, runny nose, itchy eyes. Uh, you can have just nasal congestion, uh, itchy nose or itchy throat. Um, some people even complain that their ears really itch. Um, some people will cough. If you get, instead of like a runny nose, sometimes that trickles down the back of the throat post-nasal drainage and people will be coughing. It can also flare asthma. You can have allergies manifested by breathing problems, wheezing, shortness of breath, cough. Um, and a lot of people will come in, they're just kind of tired. They're run down, you know, mounting a response repeatedly against these foreign substances. Your body's working overtime and people will be tired or their nose isn't working quite right they're not breathing as well at nighttime their sleep may be disturbed because of their allergies and so that too could play into some fatigue so that's actually a pretty common symptom. Okay. Some people will have allergies manifested on their skin they can um, have uh, we call that contact dermatitis an allergy a common one is poison ivy or Virginia creeper poison sumac these are local plants Interestingly enough, poison oak is not uh, native to Indiana. A lot of people think that they might be exposed to poison oak, and unless you're traveling someplace else, we don't have that around here. But that'll manifest with a skin allergy and get a rash, and most people kind of have an idea of what that looks like, and it's horribly itchy and uncomfortable. Exactly. Um, and more severe um, with some food allergies, or some medication allergies, we can see actual swelling of the face, of the lips, of the tongue. Um, if anybody's watched the movie Hitch, you know, he gets horribly swollen from eating shrimp. Um, that's a different type of allergy, call that uh, angioedema, um, and it can be much more Another food allergy type thing. And it can, and it can um, cause enough swelling to your airway that your breathing is compromised. Wow. And you hear about some rare instances where people die of an allergic reaction. It usually involves that type of response going on. 
Dr. Karen Cook is our guest. We're talking about allergies today, and uh, those are pretty much the symptoms, right? Yeah. And then what do we do? Well, so um, we treat. Okay. Or we, uh, probably the first thing to do is try to avoid. If we can figure out what your allergen is, let's try to stay away from it. Sometimes that's easier said than done. Um, you know, if you have a job where you work in the ditches and you're allergic to poison ivy, you're going to be miserable all summer long. That's right. Um, uh, if you have a known allergy to cats, don't go volunteer at the pet shelter or pick up the free kitten. Um, uh, sometimes you can't avoid it. Fortunately, we have a slew of very effective and um, good medications uh, that can help to minimize symptoms and really improve patients' quality of life. Um, and I think that's important to mention that, you know, people who don't have allergies, they see this as um, more of a nuisance condition and stop complaining and just go wipe your nose. And really, it can have lots of implications. You know, people who have allergies spend, um, well, they have more than half, uh, double the amount of prescriptions um, than somebody who doesn't have allergies over a year's time. So people who have allergies tend to be sicker. And what goes along there is if it's in respiratory allergies, those tissues get kind of congested, they're moist with mucus, and it's the right environment for a opportune virus or bacteria to set up shop and then make the person sick and develop, you know, a sinus infection or an ear infection. Um, so there's, you know, this isn't just a nuisance condition that people, it, their, their quality of life can really be affected by allergies. Does heredity have anything to do with allergies? It sure does, definitely. We, it, it tends to follow along families. Um, believe it or not, men are slightly more likely to have allergies than women. Um, so I, I can't say that I see more men than women as far as right. allergies go. What, what kind of treatment issues or treatment uh, responses are you going to provide? So as far as treating allergies, um, much of the literature that we have available talks about the mainstay of our treatments should really be nasal steroids as far as we're talking about these upper respiratory allergies. Um, these are available both as prescription and over-the-counter that are topically putting into your nose a medicine that's going to kind of suppress this immune response, these little fighter cells that your body has against these allergens. It's going to blunt that, maybe not stop at 100%, but really slow down the response um, to these foreign particles um, so that you don't have the mucus, so you're not as congested and you feel a little bit better. Okay. So um, either a prescription or over-the-counter, these are used daily um, to keep things controlled. Um, and then orally, we have antihistamines um, that also are blocking one particular particle that these fighter cells that our body has and they're releasing um, these little particles, one of those particles is a histamine. So we have medicines that can block histamines and provide a lot of symptom relief for Those people. are the Claritins, the Allegras, that type of That's thing, That's correct. Right? Okay. Yeah, Claritin, Allegra, and Zyrtec, they're all okay. over the counter. They all have a generic. Um, and the hallmark of those three <clears throat> is that they are 24-hour antihistamines and all essentially non-sedating, so offers a great advantage over the good old Benadryl um, which also has a generic <coughs> um, because Benadryl is every four hours and is much more sedating and it's very limiting for people to use that okay. during the daytime because of the symptoms that it creates. Okay. Um, we also have a medicine called Singulair. Singulair blocks a slightly different fighter particle instead of histamines. Pardon me. Sure. <coughs> um, it blocks leukotrienes and essentially works in the same way. It's a once a day medicine to minimize your symptoms in your nose or your eyes. Okay. We also use that for asthma as well. Dr. Karen Cook is our guest. We're talking about allergies today. And I guess I would ask you that if I think I have an allergy situation, how long do I wait before I come see you? Well, you know, if you have tried some of these medicines that again are available over the counter, um, in general, I tell patients kind of in order of potency, Claritin is probably going to be the weakest, but 
probably the best tolerated as far as drying effects and sedation. So you start with an over-the-counter. Allegra is maybe a little more potent and then Zyrtec is kind of the strongest. If you've tried those and you're having trouble, you're not getting under control, um, you have the nasal steroids that we talked about. Those recently have gone over the counter just in the last probably two or three years. Um, so to use those, if you're not getting better after probably 10 to 14 days of using these over the counters, if you're not noticing improvement, to kind of come in. Sometimes it could be infection. Sometimes we just need a little tweaking of how the dosing is being done. Um, there is a little bit of a trick on appropriate use of the nasal steroids to make sure those are getting on the tissue and when I have patients use those I tell them after their bath or shower you get out you kind of blow your nose right. use maybe some nasal saline to rinse any extra mucus out okay. so that way when you're using these steroids they're getting right on the tissue that we're wanting them to work on so sometimes it that just takes sense. a little bit of sure. tweaking there and sometimes they're really tough allergies or maybe there's multiple allergies um, and those would be the cases where we might say hey if we've tried a few things and it's not working let's get you tested and find out what the culprit is occasionally people do not have allergies and their symptoms are are more of just a sensitive nose um, something too to mention people will comment a lot that they are uh, allergic to smoke you know whether it's tobacco smoke or you know outdoor smoke outdoor this smoke. time of this time of year burning right. leaves and things yeah um, most of the time that's more of just an irritant the nose is the job of the nose is to kind of filter out foreign things whether it's dirt and dust or smoke kind of you know make a wall around that um, and that's the job of the nose and it gets stuffy um, and you can get some symptoms but it's not truly an allergy to tobacco smoke or to bonfires now occasionally if you're burning something if it's oak leaves and you have an oak allergy you might indeed have some issues people who have poison ivy allergies if there's poison ivy being burned in a bonfire they can actually manifest some of their typical allergy symptoms because of that exposure not on their skin but that they've breathed that um, so also we have and people know of this too we call it allergy shots um, these are vials um, made up by the allergist to the allergen that a person is allergic to. We figure out what it is and then gradually over a period of time they are exposed through a shot to a little bit of their allergen, a little bit, a little bit more, a little bit more, and over a several month period we try to get their immune system to no longer see this as a foreign substance and then they won't react against it anymore. Dr. Cook, as a, as a child, I was very uh, allergic or allergies to poison ivy. Mm -hmm. Seems like later on it kind of went away. Can you outgrow some of the allergies Definitely that you so. have? Definitely so. Definitely okay. so. It's, it's common to kind of outgrow allergies. The other thing that can happen is, um, is you can develop new allergies. Um, the older we are in life, the much less likely that somebody is going to develop a new allergy. Our immune systems tend to get a little weaker as we age. Um, and so that's not a common thing. So if somebody's got some new symptoms that they've never had before, we kind of look for a new variable. What's different? Did you move to the area and you've lived somewhere else? Is there a new pet? Did you move to a new home? Um, so um, yes, people can, and people can develop allergies like I mentioned. You have to be exposed to it. You know, somebody's had a dog all their life and never had symptoms, and then they go to the allergist and they're like, well, you're allergic to dogs. Well, I can't be. I've, I've been around them all my life. Well, that's part of developing sure. the allergies. You've been exposed to it. One of the things, too, that's not a topic for this program particularly, but Dr. Bill Howard, also from Akron, has occasionally talked about that your pets can get allergies, too. They can have allergies. Oh, yes. Yeah. Commonly in pets, it's manifested on the skin. And right. they'll just be itchy and scratchy, and you feel so bad for them. Um, but, yes, that, that's true as well. All right, what else would you like to add, Dr. Cooker? We pretty well covered it. This pretty well covered it. Okay. And just to, just to reiterate that there's, um, you know, people can be allergic to just about anything and it can be manifested in just about any way. Um, if your symptoms are mild, you know, avoid it if you can. If they're more severe, try some over-the-counter medications. If that's not working for you, um, then you can always see your doctor and we have a lot of 
tricks up our sleeve to try to get your okay. symptoms under control. And if we'd like to come visit with you because we have a, an issue we'd like to discuss, how do we get a hold of you? So I practice out in Akron at Akron Medical Center. Okay. Uh, we're at the corner of, well, where 14 takes the turn north. Um, and our office phone number is 598-2020. Dr. Karen Cook, our guest today, talking about allergies. Dr. Cook, good information. We appreciate you being here. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Glad to be here. Thanks. Okay. And that's a Doc Talk for our Thursday morning here on 92.1 WROI.